We all want to do well in life. You will be brainwashed every single day. That is probably the secret to why hotelies are so successful once they graduate. When I started college at the hotel school, I had no idea what I had signed up for. Had I done some things differently if I knew the things I know now? Maybe or maybe not. My name is Patricia, AKA Hotelie Patty, and I am a graduate of the hotel school at Cornell. And on this channel, we talk about all things hotels and hospitality, ranging from the hotel school and career advice all the way to the occasional hotel tours, like the one I'm in the middle of filming right now. Without further ado, here are five things I wish I knew before starting at the hotel school. Number one, you are committed for life. Once a hotelie, always a hotelie. The hotel school will provide you with a global community that is going to last you a lifetime. The bond that hoteliers share is so special that I've had experiences of reaching out to older hoteliers who are 10 and 30 years older than me and receiving so much warmth and support whenever I do talk to them. They will almost greet you like you have been family friends for forever because these older hoteliers too had the experience of talking to students that came before them and having a positive experience whenever they were networking or connecting. So it is a beautiful cycle that hoteliers are creating and the bond is one of a kind. Number two, peer pressure is real. You will see that a lot of students start at the hotel school already knowing what they want to do once they graduate. And these days, real estate seems to be what everybody is focused on and the hotel school has an excellent program and concentration that will give you the skills that you need if that is what you are looking for. Now, for the rest of others, we may also feel the pressure to go along the path that all of our peers are going. Peer pressure is a thing and for a while, I also convinced myself that real estate was something that I was passionate about. So for an entire year, I did go through recruiting for real estate companies. I think I must have done 15 interviews and I did land two internships, both of which were canceled due to COVID, but it was a great experience in the sense that the interview process really gave me that insight and showed me that it wasn't the path for me, even though all my friends were going into it. Whatever decision we make, we have to remind ourselves constantly that our decision is our own and we don't need to be afraid to be an outlier. This is not to say that choosing a more traditional or a more common path within hospitality is a bad choice. The point I want to get across is that our choice has to come from within. And that's the only way you will make the wisest decision when it comes to career for yourself. Number three, FOMO will happen. Hotelies are very busy people, heavily involved in extracurriculars outside of the classroom. When I looked around, all of my friends easily committed themselves into four, five, six different clubs, fraternities, and organizations. Now, why do we keep ourselves so busy? I think the whole purpose is that we want to do better at school and develop our careers to set ourselves for success once we graduate. That is probably a common desire for each and every student at the hotel school. We all want to do well in life. The first day of orientation at the hotel school, we sat in an auditorium where older hotelies were giving us underclassmen advice. And one of the students said, don't be afraid to sign up for 10 different clubs. Now, looking back on this advice, I think it was an excellent one that younger students need to hear. But to break down on it a little further, I think what she meant to say is that it's a good idea to mix it up and explore your interests and mix yourself amongst different types of peers. But sometimes students can take it far and take it as a sign that you need to max yourself out completely all the time. And that is something that you should watch out for. First semester or your first year, you'll want to try everything out. And I think that's an absolutely great idea. But eventually you'd want to narrow down some of these options, cut down your engagements. So you can focus on building quality relationships within the few select groups of people and make meaningful contributions. 
Because if you actually signed up for 10 different clubs and stayed in it, you're going to be so busy running around, leaving a meeting early to be late for the next one. And that will compromise the quality of your college life. So that's not something I want to recommend. You may also want to enjoy some non-academic related activities, like spending the weekend with your friend touring the wineries at the Great Finger Lakes area. We have one of the best wine regions in the country, second to Napa Valley, of course. You may want to attend some a cappella concerts that your friend is a part of and cheer your friend on. Something that is not academic or career related, something that is for you. Carving time out to do that is a key element to a successful college experience. So even if it feels like everybody else is doing more than you, and you feel like you could be doing more and better, find your own pace that is fulfilling for yourself, that is sustainable and ultimately makes you happy. And to that end, I do want to mention that we're all built different. Some of my friends were just wicked smart, could operate on four hours of sleep every night and manage six different organizations as presidents while still being able to ace the test that they studied an hour for whereas it took me 10 hours to study for. At one point, you just have to learn that there will always be people doing more and better than you. But the important part is to find peace within yourself. And life is not sometimes fair that way. Like I'm someone who requires quality eight, seven, eight hours of sleep and cannot operate the next day if I pulled an all-nighter. I don't think I've ever tried to pull an all-nighter ever during college, but some people do it and they still are fine in the short term. The bottom line is find your own pace. Number four, you will be brainwashed every single day and it's not a bad thing. While I was still a student at the hotel school, every day we would hear from our professors, the dean and the rest of faculty that we are attending the best hotel school in the world. And it is true. When I first heard it, I thought it was a bit cheesy. I cringed a little bit. And then I got used to hearing it. When you hear the same kind of ego boosting motivation for the duration of three to four years every single day, you come to believe it. I think that was one of the most powerful tools that educators instilled in us students. They implanted us that sense of confidence that we were the cream of the crop. And that is probably the secret to why why hoteliers are so successful once they graduate. How the Cornell Hotel School breeds some of the greatest leaders of all time in the hotel industry. When we hear that we are currently attending the best school in the world, we put ourselves to a higher standard and we get used to putting out quality output because greatness is expected of us. And that's probably why most of us are successful when we graduate in whichever jobs and careers we choose. And people do come to see that. I think the hotel school has developed a reputation for breeding great talent. And so employers or partners want to now work with us, work for us and hire us. Number five, this is probably an unexpected point, but you may find your lobster, AKA the love of your life in the hotel school. It's a very common thing for people to find their lifelong partner in undergrad, but it is especially the case for hotelies. It is very common for hotelies to meet another hotelie and to be with them forever. I think it has to do with that special bond that we share, that as we talked about, being passionate about what we do and sharing the same career makes for an interesting dynamic between the relationship because you have that much more to share with one another. I've seen many guest lecturers return to campus to provide us with seminars and talks and they return with their spouses. We've seen a wife and a husband give a speech together on the same stage. I'm starting to see a lot of friends who started dating during the hotel school, getting engaged and getting married. During the first week of orientation, we were sitting in an auditorium. It was the end of the orientation week and the Dean came on stage to give us the final talk. And she said, guys, look around carefully in this auditorium. Some of you will find the love of your life right in this room. And it did happen for some people. 
So keep your eyes open, you guys. So to wrap this video up, if I were to go back to 2018 and if I were to start the hotel school all over again, I tell myself to be prepared, to be prepared to meet a great bunch of people in the best hotel school in the world, to work the hardest I've ever worked, and then find my own pace and balance. And lastly, to be prepared for anything else that may come my way. As I always say, the more you know, the more you see. Keep your eyes and ears open and let life surprise you.